How's it going, guys? Episode number three of the Cool Cast. At least that's currently calling everybody now. Here I'm with the good boy himself, Hidden Xperia, Lore Extraordinaire Master over here. So why don't you say hello, Luke? Hello, my friends. Uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's not my show, but welcome anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I brought Luke on because I thought uh, since we, you know, big thing recently just happened with the Halo uh, media as a whole as the Halo show come out and then talking with the guy who is like the go-to lore person, I think he'd be a good person to kind of chat about the discrepancies between the show and the lore <laughs> and overall thoughts and opinions on it because uh, I saw your video on You definitely have thoughts on the Halo show so far. And, yeah, uh, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll go into uh, content update 29, talk about that now that the honeymoon phase is over, and also what the future of Halo is looking like within this whole podcast. And then rounding off with a little bit of an IGN Halo poll, which I thought would be kind of interesting to dive into. So first of all, let's go into like, what's going on with the games at the moment right now at the moment. And that is content update 29. I say that now that the honeymoon phase is over, how do you feel about it? Are you still playing a lot of Halo? This wasn't enough to kind of keep your attention. Like, how do you feel about the it so far? Nah, I mean, I was kind of already not playing any Halo anyway. Um, and if ever there was an update that wasn't going to bring me back, it was sure as hell going to be content update 29. Um, I mean, it wasn't a content update. It was a shop update with one map, which granted, I think the map is kind of cool, but mm. like, that's the only playable piece of content. If you don't, there's four stuff as well, obviously, but like this, the only like matchmaking thing to go with is illusion. That's it. Everything else is just like, oh, here's this cool armor and it's all locked behind the store. So like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not playing. Um, I've been kind of like, I, I don't know. I've not played much infinite since launch, I've, but I've gone through periods of like, for like two weeks, I've played it loads and then I've just not played it for like four months. And then I'll do the same again. I'll play it for like two weeks, like religiously. And then again, I just won't, like, won't open it for like two months or whatever. Um, and I'm not in one of those phases right now. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I'm kind of, for the most part, I personally, just kind of done with Infinite now. Like I've had my first year out with it. I've played all I want to play of it. I've enjoyed what I wanted to enjoy. I kind of just, I just want to move on to something else now. I want a new game. I, I'm, I'm kind of, for me personally, kind of just bored of Infinite now. Um, I just, I want to see what comes next. Oh yeah, I totally agree with that. Like, man, I've definitely put my fair share in. I think I'm at like 900, 800 hours into Halo Infinite at the moment. Like, yep, I'll jump in and play the new season stuff just because it's new and fun. Like, Firefight's really fun within the game as well. Uh, the new map, like you mentioned, is really cool. Illusion is like, finally, like a fun, like social map to finally have in Halo Infinite. It has some, yeah. some kind of interesting, unique aspect to it that really makes it stand out besides just having been like, another three lane map that's like relatively balanced all right you know kind of thing yeah you know, like i mentioned about like the sh it's kind of like a shop update for the most part like for how much content was tied behind the shop and something you can't really earn in game anymore especially with like the all that the ballot passes have been removed you can't earn credits within the game by just playing to then potentially spend within the shop to get that armor set you really want or something like that. It's just yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how little in this game is actually earnable by playing the game. Is I, I still find it just insane. Like we, in a franchise like Halo, that since two thousand and seven has been renowned for actual gameplay related unlocks and achievement and challenge and commendation and even in some cases skill related unlocks, and now we basically have none of that it's just like gives you credit card details or nothing like you get very and it's even worse with the operation passes like at least with um the battle passes there was like i wouldn't say there was anywhere near enough armor to unlock in the battle passes but there was a lot more than there is now now it's like one helmet one set of shoulders one chest piece and a few other things and that is literally it everything else is in the store and like you said now that there aren't battle passes with credits in them to earn you literally cannot earn them by playing the game at all like at least with credits in the battle pass you if you finish like all the battle passes you could maybe buy one bundle by playing the game if you were lucky you could buy one bundle i think technically but with this like nah nothing it's just all credit card or nothing and from like a per like a purely business standpoint, I kind of get it now because it's obvious that three four three are shifting focus like away from infinite now. Like infinite is not the whole thing they're focused on now. It's very clear that there's like other things going on there. Um, so I I get it. Kind of just like right. So we're not going to be doing any major updates. We may as well just get as much money out of it as possible, which is fair. It's what it is what it is. It's a business, but I don't know. It's just annoying that what 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 gets me with it is that infinite art style for the spartans chimera aside because like core is absolutely atrocious but the rest of them 
absolutely spectacular. Like genuinely some of my favorite armor in the entire franchise, including some of the bungee stuff. Um, and it's it's all like it's soured because it's locked behind a paywall. Like I look at some of the Mark IV stuff and it looks absolutely incredible. Like some of the the, the Omega team stuff in particular is just like like incredible, <laughs> absolutely incredible. But like, I don't know for, for me, and I know a lot of other people think this, think this, this way as well. Half of the soul of a of an unlock is how you unlock it. Like for me, like I love, I love Hayabusa and Katana in particular in Halo Three, right? Katana in particular. Let's talk about that. I love Katana, how it looks. But part of the soul of Katana is the journey that you go through getting a thousand gamer score to unlock it, right? Same with security, same with like any other achievement based thing, same with EOD, same with getting recon during Vidmasters. It was part of part of the soul and the identity of the armor piece is how you got it. And that's just not a thing anymore. That's just been eroded. Like the how you got it is you whip out the credit card and you put the three digits in the back and into the shop and that's it. Like I don't know. It just makes everything, even if it looks incredible like most of Infinite stuff does, it just makes it feel soulless. Yeah. I pretty much agree with that one like i think i remember i watched your video by saying that was it like 80 or close to 90 percent of the customization that's available with this content update is tied behind the store and it's like man yeah. like again like you're just you're we're just losing so much going to this operation model like i get it maybe you get a chance to get more content more frequently when it comes to like stuff you can do within the game like maps and stuff losing that aspect of like be able to earn the stuff within the game like even within call of duty like you still earn creds within the battle pass you can just spend within the shop like i've done it yep. ground my way up to earn a few credits spend it in the shop and get some interesting customization that you can't really get any other kind of way and i get that but there's still ways you can like unlock things within the game and now you only get like a uh, armor set that's fine but then we're kind of running back into that issue that we had even with like the fracture cores right where uh th they would launch and you'd have like just enough to get like a some customization but then there's nothing really filled out about it so then like when you're wearing mark four you either have like one helmet or no chest pieces to choose from no wrist attachments or anything like that so it's just kind of like you end up just looking like everybody else which kind of loses the fun of customization is trying to make yourself be more individualistic in the whole thing that which helps with cross core but there still is are those limitations yeah definitely and it's still like like if, for example if you like the aesthetic of a core but all of this stuff like for example i think it was um was it eagle strike where a significant amount was locked behind the store more so than like the other two fracture ones as well mm. like if you like the aesthetic of eagle strike you have no choice but to like pay money if you want most of it like there's it's just you can't you can't get most of the eagle strike specific armor unless you pay yeah i don't know man it sucks like I, but like at the, at the end of the day this is might sound weird but like if this is what it takes for us to like move on and start moving to like the next game then i'll, I'll take it because i don't know I, I, I just really want to move on to what's next now i like infinite now is running up to being three years old i, mm -hmm. I want to start moving on at this point um i still think halo games not mainline games but halo games in general should be on a three-year cadence i think three years is absolutely fine like first two years you can enjoy the game but like by the third year i feel like you're starting to be like right okay i, I kind of want to play something else now and I, i'm really hoping that like we we do start to move on sooner rather than later uh actually you mentioned since you mentioned about the chimera core uh in there i don't know if you've seen the leaks of the the new armor set that's coming oh, with the cyber showdown three. God. Oh my <laughs> bro you know what's wild right that's coming in the same update as mark four how 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 in, in what plane of existence are those two sets of armor designed for the same update how are they designed for the same ip i truly don't get it like i i honestly it makes seeker look like halo 3 recon i, I don't understand <laughs> how it's that like and i could at least see like i don't like mo like not i'd say 95 percent of gen 2 stuff i think just looks ugly but like I can see how Gen Two, how people could say that yeah, Gen Two looks like Halo on that. It looks like it fits in the Mjolnir aesthetic. I could see how people could say that. I genuinely can't see how anyone could look at like that, that especially that brand new Chimera armor and think like, yeah, this this looks like it belongs in the Halo aesthetic. This looks like something the Halo aesthetic would would create. I, I just I don't get it, man. I, I, it looks it, it, I don't know what it looks like. I don't, I'm lost yeah. for words to be honest. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same boat with that one too, because I mean, it's also been basically financially proven, right? When they brought in the classic CE armor set, right? Sold like crazy. I think it put Halo at the top 10, I think for sure, at least top five, even of most sold it was games. Like top three, I think. Yeah. It was like third, wasn't it? It was yeah. ridiculous like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's proof that 
people just want Halo. Like they don't want like weird spin-off, weird looking things that are supposed to maybe expand the art style to get more people interested in the game. Like, no, they just they want Halo. Give us yeah. Halo. And then when the Mark IV came in, we were almost super excited, but then like I said, having most like customization tied behind the shop was just like, man, ah, that hurts a little bit yeah. right there. And then we do have Spartan points coming in, so maybe they'd be generous less be able to use Spartan points in the shop to grind through or something like that, but I doubt it. I will be absolutely blown away if they make it anywhere near the shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Blown away. I think also kind of what you agree with you on the saying, like kind of just looking forward to what's coming next when it comes to that, just yeah. Halo in general. Uh, which kind of leads me into the next topic I want to talk about within here is uh, like we do know now that officially that there are multiple projects in the works, according to Sketch at least, when it comes to what's coming next for Halo. Um, and it kind of, I feel like it kind of ties into the leak, I guess you want to call it leak, that we recently saw with like that concept art on certain Infinity's website. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw mm. that. And it, it looked like it would be concept art for what Tatanka would have been. And so I'm wondering if you think that if any aspects of Tatanka you think might be transferred into whatever the new experience might be. No, I have, I have a big theory about Tatanka, honestly. Um, and this is just like a complete like shot in the dark theory. You'll probably see that it's a little bit biased when I get into it. But um, I honestly think that Tatanka wasn't completely scrapped. I think it was, com I think instead of being scrapped, it was completely pivoted because obviously we know that it was meant to be something like a battle royale. It wasn't like a conventional battle royale, but it was meant to be like a battle royale type thing, right? At least that's what I remember hearing. Um, I have a feeling now that battle royale is like not dead by any means, but like now that it's kind of like, so last week, so to speak, um, so last season, I feel like they've pivoted a Tatanka to an extraction shooter. I, I, I honestly think that's what it's going to end up being. I might be wrong. That might just be my Tarka bias, but I, I feel <laughs> like with how many games nowadays and franchises are starting to dip the toes into extraction shooters, like they did with Battle Royals, like what, six or seven years ago, I, I think that makes sense to me. Um, I don't know. It, I think Halo would work with an extraction shooter. I think it'd be, I, I think it'd be weird. I think Halo is more suited to a battle royale person. The, the formula would fit a BR more than an extraction shooter, but I think it could work. I think it definitely could work. That said, I've not played a single one yet. That's not Tarkov that captures me. Everyone that I've tried, like I, mean, I say that all I really tried with DMZ and DMZ, I did not enjoy it all. I thought DMZ was like far too basic and run of the mill and surface level. Um, but if Halo wants to give that a go, I would be down for them trying that genre because I think even if it doesn't seem like it would work at a first glance, they could probably make it work. And I mean, hell, dude, if anyone can make a Halo extraction shooter work, it's Max Oberman, right? So. Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see about my, my that's my theory on it. I would say probably fifty percent sure that that's gonna end up being an extra action shooter. You know, you've been a pretty dedicated Tarkov player, I know, on on the on the side here, you know, kind of low key, just like obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. That, that, uh, how like how would you go about making a Halo extraction shooter that maybe not as like hardcore as Tarkov or as like difficult to get into, but something that has depth? See, that's the weird thing about the genre. I think an extraction shooter has to be hardcore. I don't think you can make a, a shallow one. I, that, I think that's the reason why DMZ failed. I, I think, for me personally, the reason that Tarkov works so well is because it's so deep and because it's so, like, at, at first glance, it's so inaccessible. That's why it works for me, because when you get over that hump of the game beating you to a pulp, making you lose all of your gear, getting killed like raid after raid after raid after raid. You have one raid where the game just kind of like clicks and you're like, oh, wait, I get it now. And then all of like the, the gameplay systems and the mechanics and the combat loop starts to click and you understand the game. And I think that's the beauty of an extraction shooter. You can't have it. I, I don't think that's a genre that can be shallow. I, I don't think like, it's almost like RTS. Like RTS can only get so shallow and if you go past that you start getting into like the mobile game rts's that are kind of just there to get you to pay for <laughs> microtransactions <laughs> um it's one of those genres that i think has to be hardcore so i would say personally i th i would hope they would go in a hardcore direction but i don't think they would do um i think th i think they're gonna try and if it is a thing i think they will try and casualize it a bit because it's halo right and they kind of need to uh, which does concern me a little bit if obviously this is all entirely hypothetical, but if it is real, um, 
if that is what it is and if that's the direction they go that does concern me a little bit because the biggest like catch with an extraction shooter is the risk like when you go into a raid you're risking potentially weeks worth of work on you and you could just die like that and lose all of it right but it's that risk that makes getting out at the end after having killed like three players and taken all of their loot and done the three quests that makes it worth it and i think if you start to erode that risk and make it more casual you kind of lose that charm that the genre has i don't know it's it's a loaded uh, that's a, that's a honestly it's far too big for something this hypothetical um, <laughs> yeah. it's it, but yeah it's one of those things that i think they probably will try and casualize it a little bit because it's halo right and right. it has to be so but we'll, we'll, and it's also going to be a console game as well because it's halo it's going to be on consoles so i don't know we'll have to wait and see but that's that's what i think has happened to it personally you think it'd be maybe like a rush to get something out like an extraction shooter halo version out before destiny's uh, or bungie's uh marathon game comes out oh yeah i forgot about that. that's a good point actually uh yeah, I don't know, because, like, Battle Royales share a lot of DNA with extraction shooters. Like, they have a lot of common denominators between the two, and there's a lot of systems that you could theoretically copy and paste over to the other, and they wouldn't fill out of place. Like, healing system, looting, inventory, um, that kind of stuff, like, exploration, that kind, of, that kind of stuff, like, all the mechanics that surround those kind of gameplay elements are kind of similar between the two genres. So I don't mm. think they'd have to like, it, I don't think it would be like starting from scratch. And that's part of why I think they are doing one. One, because it's like the flavor of the month now, but also because there's so much like generalization between the two of them. There's so many similarities. And I think it would be a lot easier to convert what was once something like a battle royale into an extraction shooter compared to like, well starting from scratch and something completely different and we know that since like at tatanka has been scrapped or kind of rethought or put on the shelf however they want to phrase it you know that i think there's still some form of a concept of like a large scale mode to be created within halo that maybe have some high player counts and some dynamic open worldy kind of experience to have with the game maybe i mean if they really want to go deep into like classic halo style they could Try to see if they can make out like that global battle mode, right? That was supposed to be oh, having yeah. reach. Like yeah. that, oh, that, I hope that would be something that'd be really awesome to see if they can try to pull up basically make Halo Wars, but like in first person shooter form, which oh. would be amazing, right? <laughs> Man, that's the dream right there. It's almost like a running <laughs> joke now that everyone wants Battlefront but Halo, but like unironically, we do give us that, please. I'm yeah, right. You. <laughs> uh, and then uh i guess also talking about like new projects we've seen some leaks and rumors not necessarily leaks and rumors but more just kind of like because maybe early view into what's happening with halo in the future that um a new project with halo has been in development since 2022 apparently and one linkedin pro a couple actually a couple linkedin profiles mentioned making assets and gameplay features within unreal 5 oh yeah um, those pages have now been updated since the news has gone out. But do you have any concerns of like Halo might switch over to the Unreal Engine? Um, I don't really have any concerns or like hopes really. I think I think honestly, when people talk about game engines, being perfectly honest, most people don't know anything about game engines. I know absolutely nothing about game engines whatsoever. So like, I'm. I don't think I'm really. I, I can't really sit here and be like, "Well, I think it'd be trash because of this." Or I think it'd be great because of this. I just think. I, I honestly, genuinely, I don't. I I have no idea. I mm. I I think I think it will happen. I absolutely think that it will go to Unreal because basically everything is nowadays. Like Unreal is almost a monopoly at this point. Um, it's like a toss up between Unreal and Unity at this point. Um, and Unity kind of destroyed themselves last year, so probably going to be <laughs> Unreal winning that. Um. But I, uh, yeah, I, I honestly I don't I, I don't really have any thoughts on that because I know nothing about the way that game engines work. People always say that you can't recreate the feel of Halo in other engines, but I don't entirely agree with that because I, I, the feel of Halo isn't like some tree or element of Blam that is specific to Blam. It's like physics and gravity and the way that objects interact and that kind of stuff. So and like ballistics and that kind of thing. So I, I think you could very if you had like a dedicated team focused entirely on recreating the Halo feel, I think you could definitely pull it off in a different engine. Um, 
Honestly, I, I feel like most people probably wouldn't even notice it being on a different engine if they did it right. I think most people wouldn't even realize that there'd been an engine switch. Um, obviously, they'll end up if that ends up happening, they'll market the hell out of it like they with space. Um, because <laughs> apparently that's a marketable thing nowadays. We've moved engine. Um, I honestly can't even answer that question because I know absolutely nothing about game I mean, engines. <laughs> I mean, like you and I have both played games that have been made on Unreal, they feel good like they're, they're like we've played shooters in unreal like think of the gears of war franchise have always been on unreal right. felt great to play on those as well we've seen like some snappy fast-paced gameplay with that like it's not like some sluggish hard to work with kind of thing like it's become becoming industry standard and some fantastic tiles have been made within the unreal engine so i mean there might be some minor differences that will just maybe can never like one-to-one -one translate over that maybe only like late night gaming could possibly point out you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I think it's certainly possible, and especially like if it helps the workflow. Because of everything I've ever heard of when it comes to Halo development, one thing like when it comes to, like reading Glassdoor reviews or just hearing people that worked in three four three and then came out kind of thing. The the two things I keep hearing the most is that the people that you work with are great. It's really cool to work on Halo, but the engine is a really difficult thing to work on when it comes to yeah. developing the game. And if there's any kind of way to help out that workflow, I'd say absolutely go for it. Especially since like now more than ever, I think time is of the essence to get something new out for people to absolutely. play around with and just get past infinite right now at the moment. I, I, yeah, no, I couldn't agree more with that. I, I think time is absolutely of the essence because like, Regardless of the kind of comeback journey that Infinite has been on, the broader audience don't care. Mm -hmm. um, the, the wider general game population don't care or they'd be playing the game right now. Um, you only capture the audience with a brand new game. Once that brand new game comes out, you either keep them by having a good launch or you lose them. And there are, yes, examples of games that lose them and then get them back. Everyone always says like, oh, the Apex Revival, but like, how many games haven't had an Apex Revival, right? Like, you you really only have launch to capture that audience. And if you don't get them there, they're on to the next thing. I mean, exactly. there's so many games nowadays for them to play. And because of Game Pass and stuff like that, there's like the barriers to entry is literally nothing at this point. So people can pick up and drop a game like that, and they will do. And if a game doesn't satisfy them, like, immediately... I mean, hell, I'm guilty of this. I've done this game, the games before. Like, I've been... Not, I wouldn't necessarily hype for games, but I've been like intrigued in a game and I've downloaded it on Game Pass and I've played it and literally like half an hour in, I've been like, nah, I'm all right. And I close it and never open it again. And like, I don't know, that that's what most people are like. That, I've got friends in real life that do that all the time with games. They'll play it for like 20 minutes and be like, nah, I'm all right. And go back to whatever they were playing before. And mm. I think that is what the general audience is like. If you don't get them at the, at the start, you're never going to get them. So uh, that's reason one of three three million why I would like uh, <laughs> a, a new Halo game stat. Yeah, no, I totally agree, and especially since uh, like everything that's been coming to Halo Infinite has been you know great improvements, like you know Firefight coming into the game. They got a new networking model in the works right now, new maps, modes, things like that. But that's all just kind of like to satiate the current player base. Like nothing to really get people excited that are outside of the Halo sphere, I guess you want to call it community. To get them excited to jump back in because i think the only thing that would do that would really be like a new campaign which yeah. you know we're not getting anytime soon <laughs> we should have <laughs> <then why not? laughs> so which also kind of makes you think like uh, with if it's going to be like a fast turnaround for the next game say like within like two years right like 2026 20, or something we get the new halo game would you be okay with it being like a multiplayer only game or maybe like a standalone campaign thing or like what would be like a kind of well, trade-off you would make for the sacrifice of time oh for me right now absolutely do a single player only campaign like a single player only game i am so burnt out from halo multiplayer now i feel like we've just been beating around the head with it now for so long and everything else has been just left by the wayside like i'm i'm so tired of halo multiplayer at this point i don't i don't dislike it i don't want it to go away permanently but i'm just tired of it i want something different that's not multiplayer Halo is long, 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 long overdue. Uh, I was going to say another because technically ODST kind of was this, but also kind of not. Well, long overdue, just a single player, narrative driven, maybe 20 hour long campaign game that is focused only on campaign and narrative and co op as well. I'd say, I, I mean, Halo and co op go hand in hand, right? Like putting those two together. Um, 
Halo, I can't believe it's never happened. I mean, again, I've said this a billion times on my channel, but how in the hell has a Johnson spin-off game never happened? An Arbiter spin-off game never happened? A Flood Survival Horror game never happened? I genuinely, I, I feel like a broken record. My, I can feel the record in my skull getting stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I yeah, I still say it. Like, I, I don't understand how this hasn't happened. And I feel like now is, I mean, it's been the perfect time to do that now for like 15 years. But now is the perfect, perfect time to do something like that because Halo needs a, doesn't need a break from multiplayer. I, I don't want, I don't want it to sound like I want multiplayer to be sunsetted or just like thrown by the wayside for years. But I just want campaign to get the same focus that multiplayer gets. I think it deserves it. I think not doing it is a massive misallocation of resources frankly because people don't realize that there's a huge audience of people out there who only play halo of campaign they only play halo so they can play through the story play through campaign with their buddies or whatever and that's it like a lot of people don't play pvp multiplayer a lot of people do but a lot of people also don't and that that demographic are just being ignored right now completely flat out ignored and i don't get why halo has not tried to tap into that yet i'm really hoping that happens at some point soon and back to your original point i'm hoping that comes in the form of spin-off like dude if we got like a resident evil style flood survival horror game i mean i don't think i need to tell you how <laughs> what, what my reaction would be if that was done right <laughs> christ almighty there'd be christ. more there'd be a bigger reaction than the the ending of mendicant bias being mentioned at the end of halo oh, <laughs> bro that, that would make that reaction look like me going downstairs and getting dinner <laughs> but yeah so like yeah because like i think the main thing is like yeah like with like a halo story you can really just it's easy it's a, i think it's an easy win to just to get the general audience involved with uh the halo yeah. franchise again and also just that i feel with the halo side of things that like a 4v4 multiplayer uh ava big team battle thing is it's it's even though they're fun it's great we've just been playing it for 20 plus years now that I, we just need something crazy new and exciting and if you're just going to release a halo game that's just gonna be like big team battle and 4v4 which still definitely need to be there for sure but just something new that but plays yeah. off of like the fundamentals that were found made with infinite which i thought were fantastic but it just we need something different to do than just you know getting like a high co score team slayer match you know i no, i agree entirely um i think one of the things when you look at a lot of a lot of um modern popular genres right now a lot of the focus is on like overcoming extreme odds so like you look at battle royale and it's technically like one versus 150 or you look at extraction shooters and it's kind of the same well kind of the same sort of vibe i think halo needs a mode that's that's like that i'm not saying halo, halo needs a battle royale because frankly i don't think that would have helped it with infinite at all um i think that would have just done even more harm to the game because it would have been even more <laughs> eyes on a game that's broken and finished um if i had launched with the game but i think halo needs some kind of like you said a, a big mode i don't know what that is what that entails but something that has you on the edge of your seat in a way that like team slayer or whatever doesn't like like you said i agree completely with what you said that like those things need to be, if you're doing a Halo multiplayer that's like a main game, if it's a spin-off game, like fair enough, it doesn't have to be that, it's fine. Spin-offs are meant for experimentation and trying new things. But if it's a main game, you need Team Slayer, you need Big Team, you need uh, Team Doubles, Team Snipers, yada yada, you need that stuff, right? But there needs to be something big. Like, that's why I was amazed that Infinite didn't have a big third mode. Mm -hmm. I, I can't believe it had nothing, like literally just nothing. Like, I don't really like Warzone, but at least Halo 5 had Warzone, right? It had something that it tried to do to push the boat out a little bit. Um, I always wanted like a really, really large scale Dominion, more so than Warzone. Oh, uh, yeah. I still think Domi Dominion in Halo 4 was massively underrated. Like the, the base building aspects of that, although they were like kind of small, that concept should have been massively expanded upon. And that's, that's, I think that's waiting to happen. I, I think that's the kind of thing that they should be doing for a big third mode, honestly, not a battle royale. I mean, I would be down for an extraction shooter. I would be hesitant to see how they do it with Halo, but I'd be down for it. But I think the safer bet would be like a huge, large scale, like battlefield scale Dominion type thing where it's like base building. You can fly like ships, you can fly Corvettes, you can get in ground vehicles. Like, like you said, Halo Wars, but in a first person shooter. That yeah. kind of vibe is, <laughs> I think, would go down a treat for Halo personally. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That, that's what I think. Like, this is like something, like something exciting and new 
which we didn't really get with Infinite. It was more just like, we got you what you've been wanting for the last 10 years, finally. <laughs> at yeah, well, we, we, we got you about 25% of what oh, yeah, you've sure. been wanting. <laughs> the rest of it might come in the next two and a half years, maybe. Possibly. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, like I said, like, just something fresh and exciting is what, definitely what's needed. And uh, like, a, like I said, like some kind of story element is just like a, a universal win. Easy, easy yeah. dub for 343 to kind of put together. But to put together all together within a two or three year cycle with how 343 has been working and potentially working in a new engine again, yeah. we'll, we'll have to wait and see as we do with uh, the Halo it's community. A, yeah, it's a tight schedule to put it lightly. But yeah, I think we can move on to our next topic, which obviously uh, at the time of recording just came out yesterday. And that is the premiere of season two of the Halo show. We had episodes one and two release. Uh, I did watch your video on the, uh, on the review of it saying that I love the title saying dear lord the halo tv show has returned and we need to talk about it <laughs> and so yeah I, I got a lot of time I'm not gonna lie I was pretty happy with that <laughs> and so I want to know like you don't have to actually recite the entire video because obviously we need to push the people over there if they need to you know get all the details <laughs> over there but like Thank just you. like I guess overall like impressions like are you feeling better, worse? Are you concerned, mixed? Like, how are you feeling with the new show so far? This season feels like whiplash because I go from one thing that feels really, really good to one thing that feels atrocious to one thing that's like pretty decent to one thing that's atrocious and like back and forth. It's, it's like, like feedback whiplash. Like, for example, uh, Joseph Morgan, who played Ackerson, was like, I look that, that was like a perfect portrayal. Like, if, if that was, you could take him out of that show put him in a regular canon and it would feel more than at home for me. Like I thought his portrayal of action was really good. And then we have chief going to the like fake knockoff halo version of joy from blade runner and having her dress like Cortana and talk to him to get over. I mean, I, I can't even finish the sentence, man. What the, who wrote that, bro? <laughs> who yeah. wrote that? Yeah, that part was like kind of confused, like what the whole purpose of that scene is. Like, I never really got that connection with Chief and Cortana within the show about like Chief having like this like really intimate connection with her. It was right. always felt very adversarial rather than like, like some, you know, connect friendship, bonding relationship kind of thing. And I don't know why he's missing Cortana. I mean, after taking over her, taking over his body in season one, which I'm glad I was kind of glass over. Like, I wish I actually should preface, like, well, we'll, we'll just get into spoilers here. I'll, I'll timestamp in the video here if you want to skip forward. But like, I'm glad that they just kind of glassed over, pun intended, um, <laughs> the, <laughs> nice. the, it, the transition of zombie chief to just regular chief, which is like that first like five seconds of just like, the, <laughs> like they had surgery and it, it's fine now. You know, bro. I like to imagine the new writers came in and were like, right, what we're we working with? Let's watch the last scene of episode of season one. And they see master chief dead in his suit being controlled by Cortana. And they're like, what, how do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> they're just like they're just like right. You know what? Screw it. Right, we don't need it. Write it. Write it out. Right. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Six nine. It. Whatever it is. Yeah. What they say in, a, in a restaurant, they get rid of it. Sixty two. Seventy seventy three. Whatever they say in a restaurant, when they get rid of an item. Yeah. Like no. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. None of that. And that's really all you could do because if you try to get in the details of like exactly how the science pseudoscience works out, it's like it's oh. gonna be just a complete mess. And just be like, yeah. They they worked it. S -s Space magic. They made it happen. Okay. You know they have high, <laughs> they have good technology now. I'm like okay good. Um. I mean, also one thing I'm actually kind of glad that this happened. Talk about uh, glassing over topics and subjects from the last season. Uh, Madrigal being glass. They mentioned in the first oh, yeah. episode. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That whole unfortunately, uh, a certain character wasn't glass with it. <laughs> yeah, which yeah, well, we'll kind of, I wanted to touch on that a little bit as well. But yeah, like yeah, there's so many like key, uh, there are, like, like the most annoying elements and the parts that no one really cared about. I think from season one. They just tried to get through it as quickly as possible and not necessarily, you know, uh, what decanonize it. You know, it's kind of like a kind of a comparison of like going from Halo 5 to Infinite, where it's like it's a fresh start, but like the events of season one still happened. But it's just yeah. like, let's just try to get past that, you know, kind of thing. They're just kind of like hastily resolved off screen in a moderately satisfying manner. So you never have to worry about them again, basically. Yeah, exactly. Just to kind of was, was address it, but just, you know, we just move on. Uh, yeah. Which is kind of something I'm kind of wishing that they would do with the whole Quan and Soren Rubble arc. Like, 
especially with this season, I don't see how this is going to tie into the events of Reach and Master Chief's story, because, like, ultimately everything needs to kind of come back to that, right? Which yeah. kind of happened all right within season one. At least Chief was on Madrigal for a little bit there in season one. But, like, how is the, the current story arc with Quan and Soran, I just feel is, like, completely dis- disconnected from everything that's happening. It, it, it feels, I mean, they're going to end up looping it back in somehow. The Soran bit, I don't mind. Like, I was kind of hoping they just get Soran off the rubble and get him to reach and then just, like, oh, no, a Nova bomb went off on the rubble and everyone's gone, okay? Um, <laughs> I was kind of hoping they'd just do that. But, like, they're going to end up tying Quan in somehow. And I, I don't understand how. She's going to end up being the savior of Reach or something. She's going to end up being, like, Noble Six or something like that. I... Oh, my God. What if she actually becomes Noble Six within <laughs> the show? Oh, my God. Like, you I... know what? You know what? I would respect that. I would respect the hell out of that. That is a commitment to the bit that I earned, like, any I've ever seen before. So, you know what? If they do that, I actually respect, because that would be hilarious. I would cry <laughs> with laughter. Like yeah, yeah. Like, like you just go, you just going, not even going off into the deep end, but you're like drilling through the pool to like into the other <laughs> side of the earth, like that far deep. Bro, you're diving headfirst into the Mariana Trench at that point. Like, you ain't coming out. <laughs> and talking about bringing back characters, uh, we have McKee coming back in with season <sighs> two, and I'm just confused. Like, how the hell does that happen? We saw oh, her Oh, no, no, die. dude, 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 you don't get it. There are shamans and space magicians <laughs> on some random colony. Don't forget about the space magicians and, and shamans. Don't forget about, remember those from the Fall of Reach, the book, and from the, they're in First Strike, they're in Ghost of Onyx, they're, remember, remember? Oh, yeah, They're in Halo 2. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, they, yeah. yeah. They're the force, like they can foresee the future and everything. And like, yeah, it's totally a thing. like. I just like I, hate, I hate seeing like fake character deaths. Like sometimes they're played out well, but like this one, I'm like you saw her die. She was yeah. dead on the ground for like the long part period of the last episode of season one. Like, how, is is she like a is she like a Palpatine clone coming back? I mean, yeah, there's clones within Halo. Is she, did the oh, Covenant yeah. figure out a way to clone her? The only thing I can see him doing that's not her being alive is for some reason she's either a hologram that the Arbit is using, which makes no sense, or she's some like dumb vision that the Arbit is having, which makes even less sense. I, I don't know, man. There is no, I, I mean, Kai shot her and she was dead. Like yeah. she wasn't like, oh, I'm hurting you shot. Her. She was dead. Like she was in the afterlife, bro. <laughs> she was gone. Somehow Maki has returned. But uh, I think the real question that we're kind of really needed to know from season from the first two episodes of season two is what is Chief's kill death ratio though? Like, <laughs> but, like what's actually working out? Oh, like, what, what do you, what do you think Chief's kill death ratio actually would be in a Halo like oh, game within Halo? Oh, within like a Halo game? Oh, bro, <laughs> I reckon I reckon he'd be ass at games. I reckon it'd be awful. He got great hand eye coordination, but I reckon like. I, I I don't know. I reckon it'd be like you know like boomers try and play games and they can't. They have to keep looking at the controller. Mm-hmm. I feel like it'd be like that. I don't know why. And no disrespect to you, Chief. But I feel like I feel like it'd be kind of like that, trying to like pick up a controller. Like, what does each button do? Like, he's intelligent and he's got really good hand-eye coordination. But something just tells me that he wouldn't be good at games. I don't know why, but something <laughs> just tells me that. Or he would just be absolutely amazing. Which I actually, with that point, I think his kill death ratio would probably would be not applicable because you just get kills, you wouldn't die. Right? Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say he wouldn't he wouldn't die. He'd be alive. <laughs> like, it's, it's like there's no way to work out his KDR right now because he's not died. Though I would say though, asking that question is like it's a that's a 2010 type of question you ask your your gamer <laughs> friends. Because with modern Dude, gaming really and skill is. with modern gaming and skill based matchmaking, like it's an irrelevant stat now at this point. You know. Yep, yep. Yeah, his KD is 1.05. <laughs> nice, nice, oh. flat even 1.05. Oh, God, that's way too accurate right there. <laughs> that's way too we're accurate. Lo- actually, that probably would, that actually probably would be his kill death ratio then, just like a, a 1.05 <laughs> with, a, with, a 48, <laughs> with a 48% win loss ratio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That gets, we saw like the first two episodes really just kind of setting up the plot points, setting up questions and things that kind of pay off later on within the season. Are you at least like invested more or like cringed less with this? Yeah, season no, so no, no, no. D- d- I, I, I will say I am genuinely invested more. And they, they released like a, a trailer today for the next few episodes. And some of the stuff in them does look really good. I'm really excited to see Spawn 3s. Really mm-hmm. excited to see Spawn 3s. They look really cool. There's, there was one little like 
I don't know, one second clip of a Spartan three fighting, and it looked really cool. Um, the Mirage armor, the SPI armor they're wearing looks really sick. Um, I don't know why it's all white. That's a bit weird, but like, I wish it was green like Kurtz was, but either way, it looks really cool. Um, and I'm also intrigued to see if they follow the fall of reach at least relatively close to canon or slightly close to canon and have it lead into alpha halo and halo one and halo two and everything like that because they definitely are getting close to the books and this and the games it's not by any means accurate but it's closer than whatever the hell season one was meant to be so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see but no i, I actually am I don't know how to say invested. I kind of just want to see some cool fight scenes, to be honest with you. I don't really care about, like, well, a lot of the character drama I don't care about. Um, I just, I'm not interested. But, like, I want to see some cool fight scenes, at, at least. Uh, well, since you are the, the lore expert here, how do Spartan 3s and Spartan 2s, like, really interact with each other? Because what I've seen on the show, it seems like they're just kind of like the clone army in Halo. But I'm wondering yeah. if that's how they kind of play out within the lore. That's not how they are. That's one of the concerns I've seen a lot of people having uh, in Halo 3. Uh, in Halo 3, that's a Freudian slip. <laughs> and, um, I like in general, um, that they're like being treated like the clone army. They're not like that. I mean, we see how they interact in Breach because George is a spawn too. Like they, they're just, they interact very like close. Um, they don't always go on ops together, but like they don't, it's not like, for example, uh, a Spartan 4 interacting with a Spartan 2. Because obviously Spartan 4s are volunteers they're marines they're odsts they're other like personnel that become spartans spartan threes are technically volunteer volunteers either way they, they feel character wise more in line with spartan twos they're not as brash they're not as like um what's the term i'm looking for spartan fours are very like cocky and brash for the most part and they don't feel like spartan the spartan has always felt kind of hollowed out personality wise and the spartan threes are more like that than spartan fours were um but they interact together fine so you know that scene with cobalt team and silver team interacting in the episode the episode two i think it was mm -hmm. where it didn't seem like spartan twos at all like that is not how spartan twos or threes would interact with spartan twos spartan threes would interact with them a lot more like spartan twos would do um very like on mission uh very little room for like their own personality and stuff like that just very on mission target and goal oriented um so it's going to be interesting i do think they're going to have them be like a clone army though um that's what it seemed like that one shot they had with all of the the threes in spi stood in like the, the grid um on reach looked very like clone army s so oh, yeah, straight out i guess that. I guess we'll wait and see. I do hope we get some characterized ones, though. I, I'm hoping that they do them kind of similar to the twos, because they should be closer to the twos and the fours. Okay, yeah, because from my impression, at least like from the trailers, I was saying that, like, since they look like they're mass-produced, which kind of gives me the vibe that they would be less uh be able to think on the feet on the fly kind of thing where like spartan twos might have more personality and be able to like think on their feet a bit more and be more creative on the battlefield compared to the threes being more like this is my programming kind of robotic thing yeah no that's not what the threes like at all like mm. not even slightly <laughs> the threes can absolutely think for themselves uh and they are not robotic at all um i i, I don't know I, the, the combat footage didn't look like that the little bit of combat footage we saw didn't look like they were going to be treated like that um there were a lot more threes and twos i can't remember the exact numbers this might be completely wrong i want to say 900 threes with all the classes i might be wrong but there were a lot more threes than there were twos um but i i think they're either going to go the complete robotic way like you said and have them just be like glorified clones or i can see them taking them more in a spot and four direction and having them be like really characterized and really personable to kind of differentiate them intentionally from the Spartan 2s, which again would not be particularly accurate. I mean, I, I actually think the Noble Team were a really good example of Spartan 3s. They had more personality than 2s in general. They were more expressive. They were more talkative than the 3s, or than the 2s, but they were nothing like Spartan 4s were and like in, in how like talkative they were. So we can, you can never tell with the show. You can never tell where <laughs> they're going to go. They might, they might nail it like they did with Akerson, or they might completely blow it like they did with Cortana, and the hologram and i'm not gonna finish that sentence <laughs> that sentence ends there yeah that one yeah like uh, that's like that's the whole thing with the halo show too it's like they do something so great and then another point you're like how how did you come to that conclusion literally the next scene they do something so bad that it counteracts it yeah. <laughs> every time oh man again like it's with the halo show you just have to wait and see like first two episodes good again action i think it's a great hot new highlight within the show um set up some interesting plot points that need to pay off but it's more about how they actually 
go through paying off or playing out the plot points and questions to be answered rather than are the is the setup good like yeah it's a good setup but it's you know a story it's all about the beginning middle and end right now we're yeah. just in the beginning at this point like maybe what you said on your video not quite a 92 percent of rotten tomatoes for the critic <laughs> Christ, reviews no <laughs> i'm sorry bro if you, I, I don't get that like it was definitely better than season one absolutely yeah. i'm not gonna say and say it wasn't but christ almighty true have you ever seen true detective season one uh no but i've heard it's really good okay that is the single best like individual season of any show ever produced like full stop right and that has a 91 on rotten tomatoes no I'm so, I'm so, no 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 <laughs> it is not better than the season one of true detective i'm <sighs> no i will not stand for that definitely not 90 quality but you know up in the 70 percentage plus uh, but again like it's it's so hard to come up with a number at this point when it comes to so early on you know numbers i feel like numbers for like rating something is so arbitrary as well like yeah. why is it a, why why have you given it a 7.5 and not a 7 or an 8 like mm. you know what i mean like it's just like what why that's just arbitrary number to give something i i'd say like the first episode was was uh good the second episode was uh uh whatever the the, whatever the, the word equivalent of a four out of ten is. All right. So I think we'll go into the last section here. This is a bit more of a fun portion of the show. Usually, the last couple episodes, I asked, like, oh, what's your favorite character? What's your favorite game? And stuff like that. But I really did that with you back at the HGS Seattle event, uh, which, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time. So that pop stuff actually kind of popped off, which was pretty awesome. Hell yeah. um, I found an interesting poll here on IGN. Which was rating the top 12 Halo games in order of like, you know, one being the best, 12 being the worst. And I wanted to see if you could guess the rankings that they had for the show or that for the, for the games. Now, this also includes the Spartan Strike, Assault, and the Halo Wars games as well. So right. I want to oh. see what you think the IGN community thinks is like the... 12 being the worst Halo game to one being the best Halo game. I'm going to start from one first, the start from the best. I think the best they're going to say Halo 3. Halo 3 is like the unanimous best one. Then that I'm going to say, I think they probably voted because nowadays the winners are blown. I think they're going to say Halo Reach, the second best one. Uh, no, Reach is not number two, but it's high okay, up good. there. Halo 2? Halo 2, yeah, is number two on the list of IGN's community's favorite Halo games. All right, number three. Three is Reach. Three is Reach, yes. Three. All right, now we got yeah. the number four. What would be IGN's fourth favorite Ooh. Halo game? Halo 1? Yeah, that's correct. Halo 1 right there. Okay. You're pretty good. You're okay. doing pretty well for yourself on this one. All okay. Right. I feel like I can read this kind of stuff pretty well, which means I'm going to get all the next ones wrong. Um, <laughs> the then I'm going to say ODST. ODST is up there, but it's not number five. Really? Infinite? Mm -hmm. Yes, Infinite's rated yeah, as okay. number five as the uh, the next favorite Halo game. Six? Then ODST? ODST is number six, then, yes. Yep. And then... then uh, Halo Wars? One? No, Halo Wars is not on the, not not number seven. See, it would, it would have been easier had like Halo Wars in the Spartan Ops and Spartan Super Games not been there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Halo 4? Yes, Halo 4, number 7 on the list as uh, IGN's top okay. 12 favorite Halo games. Now, now, what would then you say? What would you say number Halo Wars. 8? Um, 8 is not Halo Wars. Really? Halo 5? Yep, Halo 5 is number 8 on okay. that one, above Halo Wars. What, which I thought bro? Was, yeah, Come yeah, on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I don't know about that. Then Halo Wars, right? Then Halo yeah, Wars then one, Halo, Halo Wars, Wars 1 is number 9 on the, on the list there. And then, then Halo Wars 2... Yep, Halo Wars 2. And then, is, is Fire Team Raven in there? No, Fire Team Raven is not on there. Okay. Uh, so now we're uh, on. We're down to 10. So we have last last ones. We have Spartan Strike and Spartan Assault. Oh, God. I put last played whatever the first one that was that came out. I played that the day it came out, and that was the last time I played it. So that was 11 years ago. And the other one, I don't think I ever played the other one, actually. Um, the one set on a simulation of New Mombasa with a flood. Um. Oh, I, I Spartan Assault first, I guess? Yes, I, Spartan Assault, number oh, 11 yeah. on there. There you go. <laughs> and then Spartan Strike is technically the worst Halo game, apparently, yeah. according to IGN voters. <laughs> Which, I never played either Assault or Strike, so like, whichever one came out first, I'm like, I actually don't know that answer. <laughs> all, all I remember is that Spartan, Spartan Assault was quite fun until I realized it was pay to win, and then I was like, oh, okay. It's pay to win? 
Yeah, you could buy like um, you could buy loadout weapons to start with. You could buy like a rocket launcher or like a uh, like a laser or maybe a sniper as well. Um, to just like start with and run havoc with. It was quite fun though. It's like a, a top down twenty six shooter. Um, I played it on. I had the first ever Microsoft Surface. I remember I was going on holiday and I had I literally this this Surface was like I bought it thinking it would be really cool and there was just nothing on it. There was nothing I could do on it and that was the first thing they ever released on that thing that was actually like usable. So I was like, okay, I can actually do something on this thing now. So I spent the entire holiday playing Spot and Assault. That's some useless lore for you. <laughs> some, some lore from the lore master himself. <laughs> but yeah, uh, other than that, man, I think that kind of wraps up uh, everything to talk about when it comes to current events happening in Halo at the moment. And so, uh, you know, I guess we'll do like the uh, hot ones thing, like this camera, this camera, or this camera. Tell, <laughs> tell people what you got going on with your life right now. <laughs> uh, what I've got in my life. I am learning guitar again for the first time in 15 years. Hell yeah. I am, I am trying to get into acting. I oh. am playing a lot of Tarkov. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a little sleeper thing. Maybe I'll, I'll talk about that another day. That's, uh, <laughs> I wanted to do it for a long time, and I'm trying to actually make it happen after like 10 years. So mm-hmm. fingers crossed. Um, but... Uh, other than that, playing Tarkov, making Halo videos, the usual. Uh, going to the gym, lifting weights, playing guitar, trying to act. You know how hey, it is. So if you're taking lessons, you're so you're taking lessons on guitar right now? Or no, about I'm to? Self teaching. Self teaching. Okay, I yeah. got can I can I give you a, a a flash pop quiz question right here? Oh god, oh <laughs> shit, this is gonna be awful. Yeah, I, okay, go for it. I'm gonna get there it we wrong. Go. There we go, there we go. FYI, but yeah. fire. All right. Hey, let me try to get it on that. Wait, can you see the camera? Actually, I'll, let me turn my camera for you right here. What is this chord right here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can play it. I can play it. And I can like transition to and from it. I cannot tell you for the life of me what chord it is. I le- So I learned like um, eight or nine months ago, I learned a load of chords like by name. Um, and like, I was pretty good at them. And then literally they've just, they've gone. They've just, they've all gone. They're out of my head. And I don't think they're ever coming back. But you know what? I read that um, uh, Dave Grohl, self-taught, mm-hmm. went to a teacher uh, and was, and the teacher was like teaching him certain ways. He's like, nah, you know what? I'm not getting along with this. And he, he quit and self-taught. And that's that's Dave Grohl. So. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Like uh, he, I remember him talking about that when it came to the song Everlong. Uh, yes. Saying like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing like that, that main riff to Everlong. He's like, I don't know what these chords are. They just sound nice. And ultimately, yep. that's all you need to do with music. It's like if it sounds good, you're doing just fine. Like you don't need the like music theory and scale that they theory and scales help as like depending on what you're trying to do with it. You know, you don't really know know too much. Well, Luke, I appreciate coming by and uh, you know taking time out of day to chat about some Halo stuff. And uh, you know, make sure you go check out Luke's channel, which I'm sure anyone who's watching this video already is. If you're not subscribed, then you're obviously doing Halo YouTube wrong. Yeah, hopefully we get some more Halo content to chat, up, chat about in the in the future, man. Thanks, Ross, bro. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. And also, likewise, if you don't know all the details, and I guarantee that you don't know all the details, <laughs> right? Trust me, I know you. I know that you don't know all the details. You need to hit that red sub button right now, right beneath the video, and then you will know the details. But I'm telling you right now, you do not know the details. This man, this... Well, I don't know why I'm point. He's on that side or that side. That guy on one of those sides, he knows the details. So hit that sub button right now. Yeah, don't be stingy with that subscribe button, man. Don't be stingy with those follows. <laughs> Hell yeah. But yeah. Thank you all for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out. Bye.